Hello everyone, I'm Henley. Today I'm going to introduce our Triple W 2021 paper about robots android malware detection against adversary example attacks. Android is the most popular mobile operating system, capturing roughly 85% of the global market share. However, due to the open nature of Android, it has become the primary target of mobile malware. The figure below shows the gross number of Android malware from 2012 to 2019. So how to detect the Android malware has become a serious security issue in people's daily life. There are two kinds of methods for Android malware detection. The first is traditional method, which needs to extract a unique identify from an app and then to search whether it matches any recorder in a database. However, this method suffers from the disadvantages of low efficiency and high force drop rates. The second method is based on machine learning. It needs to extract features from the apps and use these features to train a classifier to detect malware. The second method is, however, vulnerable to adversary examples which are generated by adding perturbations to nature examples. According to the attack weather node the classifies parameters, the attack method can be divided to white box attack and the black box attack. All in all, it is very important to design an efficient and uh, robust classifier to defend adversarial examples. Opportunity, there are several difficulties to design such a detector. First, as the defender, we don't have enough adversary examples. Second, generalization ability of the defense method is limited. Third, to train a malware detector and an adversary example detector may make the model complicated. To this end, we propose a one-class classification for both malware detection and adversary malware defense, which results the requirement of the adversary malware. What's more, we design a new loose function for our method to enhance detection performance. Finally, to reduce model complicated, we propose a network sharing technique. Next, we will introduce our work. First, we have an overlook of our model. As shown in follow, our model first extracts feature from APK file. Then we train a model to detect the Android malware. It consists of two modulars. The first is an FDVAE, the second is an MLP. Finally, to test an Android app, one just needs to input its feature vector to our model and then combine the decisions of FDVAE and MLP to make a final decision. Now, we introduce our model in order. The first step is feature extraction. We extract three features from APK file, including API calls, intent actions, and permissions. In detail, API calls are suitable for describing app behaviors as they can clearly state what an app has done. Intent actions are a way of telling Android what standard operations activities can per perform. Permissions is required when an app access to the sensitive user data and certain system, system resources. Next, we introduce FDVAE. It plays two important roles, a feature extractor and a classifier. First, its encoder extracts the discriminative features from its input, which are used by its decoder and the MLP. Second, it decides whether the inputs are benign or not according to its reconstruction error. An input declares to be benign only when its re reconstruction error does not exceed a predetermined threshold. As shown in this slide, FDVAE has three losses. Similar to VAE, the reconstruction loss and the KL diversion loss are remind. What's more, we design a feature distangle loss to, lo to, to lead the encoder to distangle the feature of benign and malicious examples. Now we introduce the design of MLP and the decision fusion. Different from the FDVAE, the MLP is a binary classifier whose output gives the probabilities that an input is benign or not. We, 
we connected MLP with the encoder of the FDVA. Accordingly, the encoder act, acts as the pre-trained modular of the MLP, which reduces modular model complexity. As for decision fusion, only when both the FDVAE and the MLP declare that an input is benign can our model output a benign outcome. Our experiments are conducted over a dataset with about 16,000 natural examples. All these apps come from Android Zoo, as shown in picture the right. This is the Android Zoo's homepage for every app. The feature is a 379 dimensions vector which contains 147 permissions and 126 intent actions and 106 sensitive API calls. In order to verify the robustness of our model, we did a lot of experiments on the both dataset, as shown in picture left. We showed the latent vector learned by VAE and FDVAE. In both figures, the blue points correspond to benign examples, and the red ones represent the malicious examples. Obviously, our model succeeded in distangling the features. Then we evaluate our method in the scenario where no adversary example exists, as shown in table that our model output that our model outperforms all the other models in terms of misdetection rate and occurrence. In this side, slide, we evaluate the robustness of our model on the white box adversary example attacks and the black box adversary example attacks. First, we compare our method with 11 robust malware detection models on the five white box attacks, as shown in table. Every element in this table indicates the ratio of adversary examples being captured in every scenario. Obviously, our model has an apparent advantage over its 11 capitals. competitors. Then we show the robustness of our methods on the black box adversary example attacks called the email gap. We use the ratio of adversary examples being identified to show the performance of methods. As shown in the figures, all the competitors of our model are defeated by email gap. However, our model captures almost all the adversary example generated by email gap. Thanks for watching.